Man's foot slipped, fell into the pickle jar. Colleagues didn't notice. The lid was securely sealed. But the war broke out at that moment. The factory was shut down. Everyone was repatriated to their homes. And the man was completely forgotten. Until a hundred years later, two young boys broke into this place. Accidentally opened the kimchi vat. It had been submerged for 100 years. Mike was still smoking hot. His appearance has not changed a bit. Then the government held an emergency conference. People were curious about how he survived. When pressed by reporters, Mike was distracted. Because just a short time ago, the doctor said his wife had died 80 years ago. His children, whom he had never met, had been killed in a car accident. Mike did not want to accept the reality. He punched him straight in the face. But the next day, the doctor brought good news. He had a grandson still alive. This is Pete. As soon as they met, Mike hugged him with excitement. It was a little awkward. Pete decided to take his grandfather home first. But as soon as he left the house, Mike was frozen. These tall buildings were overwhelming, and he couldn't breathe. Looking at the cab that Pete had stopped, he thought it was some kind of monster. Back at home, Pete started introducing a software he had just developed. He said if he sold it, he could make a lot of money. But Mike obviously did didn't understand it. Pete could only take out the family album first, showed him a photo of himself and his wife. Now Mike could no longer hold back his feelings of longing. He wanted to go and see his wife, but he didn't expect. The once sullen family cemetery was now a garbage dump. There was a billboard next to it. Mike was angry. He criticized Pete for not protecting the family honor. When the billboard suddenly broke off, a pile of bird droppings landed on his wife's tombstone. Mike could not stand it anymore. He beat up the billboard worker directly. As a result, they were sent to the police together. Pete was released on bail with his money, but with a criminal record. The original agreement to buy the software, also rejected by the other party. When he heard the news, Mike didn't care. He just wants to buy the billboard now and make it disappear forever. Pete was devastated. The software was five years of his life's work, and because of Mike's impulsiveness, now it was all over. He told Mike, if Grandma were still alive, he would be ashamed of you. Remember what you said today. I'll build a kimchi empire and cut down the billboards to prove your stupidity. Now cucumbers are sold by the roots. He had no money to buy them. He had to go through the supermarket trash. There's fresh corn and pineapples that hadn't gone bad, but he didn't want any of them. Finally, he found half a bag of cucumbers and the all-important sodium chloride. Now he was one step away from being a billionaire. First, he went down the street and picked up a shopping cart. Then he went to the garbage can and found two wheels. A little modification with discarded materials. A war-damaged cart was born. The next day, Mike went back to the garbage cans, found a lot of cans that nobody wanted, cleaned them briefly, stuffed cucumber sticks in, then pour in six 0.66 grams of sodium chloride. As for the final process, it needs to be left to the miracle. Only natural rainwater can produce the best pickled vegetables. Half a month later, Mike's pickles were finally finished. He brought his cart to the street to sell. Since there are no additives, his pickles were very tasty. He soon made his first bucket of money. Before he left, he repeatedly told the two men to bring the bottles back after eating. He did not want to go through the garbage can again. Hearing this, the guests felt very novel. So he took a video and uploaded it to the internet. As a result, a large number of people competed to buy pickles. Mike increased the price four times. Still cannot stop people from coming all the way to the car. At the same time, Pete was sulking at home. He wanted to go out for a break. Instead, he found everyone around him talking about his grandpa Mike. During the interview, grandpa also publicly mocked his inability to make money. This made Pete even more angry. So he makes a decision that goes against his ancestors. Health department. I'd like to file a complaint. The next day, Mike's stand was shut down, and he got a $12,000 ticket. Once again, he was left penniless. Sitting on the side of the road, he was at his wit's end. Then two regular customers came up to him, and they gave him a great idea. If he set up a pickle company, so he wouldn't have to worry about being investigated. Leave the work to the interns. He could just wait and collect the money. Mike was a little confused. Wouldn't that be slavery? No, 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 no. <laughs> That's not what I mean. That's a little bit of an oversimplification. In the United States, there is such a group of college students. No salary, just work experience. Mike tapped the girl on the thigh. Then he told her to open her mouth. Yeah, she's a good pickle maker. He got a bunch of college kids who didn't want money. He taught them how to pick cucumbers. It didn't take long. The first bucket of pickles was born. And with a command from Mike, the students pushed their carts and set off. They broke down into pieces. They set up their stalls in the streets and alleys. Business was soon booming. Pete saw the scene. His face was green with anger. And Mike, do not have to do anything. Waiting for college students to make money for themselves. 200,000 easy money. He got a group of workers. He cleared his family's ancestral graves overnight and bought the bill Board, cut it down on the spot. On the other hand, Pete was once again rejected by the investor. What's more desperate is, that investor actually switched to Mike's pickles. That day Mike came home, while bragging about his achievements, while criticizing Pete's lack of work. Hearing this Pete, was completely angry. He came up with a poisonous plan, enough to completely destroy Mike. First, he told Mike that, people like to shop online nowadays, and then, he signed him up for Twitter. He lured him into talking about bride price on it. You know, a hundred years ago, there was no bride price for marriage.
marriage. The very next day, protesters came to the door with signs. Because of Mike's extreme comments, they wanted him out immediately. Even his assistant defected on the spot. They joined the protest. Overnight, Mike became a street rat. Everywhere he went, he was hunted. He had to flee home. He asked his grandson to help him smuggle himself out of the country. Peter was very happy to agree. But when he was halfway there, Pete suddenly fell down. Seeing the wound on his hand, Mike did not say anything. Tear off a piece of cloth from his clothes. Carefully help him bandage. It was then that Pete suddenly realized how wrong he was. The next day, the two arrived at the border. At that time, the police also caught up with them to atone for his crime. Pete offered to swap clothes with Mike. And so Pete is exiled to the countryside. He didn't know the area well. He couldn't even get a cell phone signal. And Mike took his place and returned to the apartment. While looking through the family photo album, a picture suddenly fell out. It was drawn by Pete when he was a kid. Mike then realized that the software Pete had developed was named after the family. A few days later, Mike found Pete. The two of them made up their differences. They also decided to join forces. One for production. One would be in charge of sales. Together they set up a pickle company. Maybe in years to come, when Mike sees his wife again in heaven, he will be proud to tell her. Our descendants have never tarnished the honor of the family.